We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to episode number 346. I don't know why I said it that way. <laughs> but anyways, we welcome you to this podcast. Yeah. And we're grateful that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. Between the long pauses, you can tell that Rob is very sincere about that. It is so true. But we do appreciate I am it. We do appreciate it. Uh, we've got a kind of a follow up from yesterday um, and a, a few follow up and comments. I know Rob was having some YouTube comments the other day uh, with unique users. And, and we've got another question about that. But I do want to say uh, right after. One of our classes in California, we're actually going to be doing a test with the Unique Typhoon H, the hexacopter. Uh, we're actually going to be doing it with Trent Sigurd, who's from Unique. We're going to be out at who's a lake. Who's been working and, I mean, essentially knows Unique as good as anybody, right? Oh, yeah, he works for him. So, right. I mean, like, he's part yeah, of product exactly. design. So, we're going to have, uh, you know, some nice hands-on. But that's uh, a really important point. So, here's Rob being sarcastic a little bit, but also making a point. You're pretty good friends with Trent, uh -huh. even though he's a unique guy. That is I true. I want to make that clear. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you trying to say something underlying here? Nah, you know. Not trying to be passive aggressive by chance. Yes. You know? uh, no, not passive aggressive. <laughs> Maybe sarcastic. <laughs> well, anyway, also thank you to everyone. Uh, who checked out our thank you notes to the FAA. You may like those. You may not. You may laugh hysterically, uh, and you may not <laughs> if you're the FAA. Uh, anyway, no, I think everyone would get a laugh out of it. I think yeah, it's kind it's of fun. objective. I would think even the FAA could laugh at that. I think that I was kind so. of the idea. Yeah. You know, it w the idea was to make it fun for everyone. So, Absolutely. you know, we live in a, in it, things are changing right now. Uh, and frankly, it's just fun to have fun. So. Got to keep a, a little humor involved in, in all these serious things. It's so true. Anyway, uh, why don't we get right into today's question from Bob in Kansas talking about search and rescue drones. When is it really okay? When is it not okay? Uh, luckily, we've got some insider knowledge. Um, I actually had the director of of Air Bears on here earlier. I need to reschedule that interview and, and do it again. Do an update. Um, just because I hear he's doing some really cool stuff. So if you haven't heard about Air Bears, they're one of the search and rescue teams here throughout the country. Uh, really awesome guy. I would recommend the Swarm Group, but they seem... At least uh, my friends have had some issues with organizations sometimes in, in getting deployed to search and rescue missions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to talk about how, you know, if a public entity can do uh, UAS operations for uh, search and rescue and if they can't, you know, what alternative do you have? So we're going to talk about that. I mean, it's today's about search and rescue. Today's about saving lives with drones. So drones for good. Uh, today's question is brought to you by Legal Flyer. Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 353 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27, which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the app store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Hey guys, Bob from Kansas. Love your show. Your podcasts have actually become addictive. We've talked a lot about commercial use of the drones, but what about public safety use of the drones? Everybody is concentrated on the FAA regulations of working a business, but what about someone that wants to use it for wildland fires or in the public safety realm? What's the FAA say about that? As a volunteer fireman and 
worked with the sheriff's department, I'd like to expand my services into that. Great question. It is a great question. It's an important question. And one of the reasons I say that is I've noticed, you know, we check out people's websites and people ask us to look at their demo reels and things like that. So we're on their websites. And I've noticed more and more people are saying for public, not necessarily using this verbiage, but for public safety reasons, let me know and I'll do it pro bono. Yeah. So there's a lot of people willing to do that. So it's an important discussion. Well, it is an important discussion because we all know that with thermal cameras, uh, we all know with regular drones that we can see a lot more, a lot faster than the Mm -hmm. average person now. Uh, or the average helicopter, you know, people, um, you know, hiking around, we're more efficient. Now, the search and rescue does have to be done a certain way in order for it to be efficient like that, in order for it to work. Um, and there are definitely nuances with utilizing thermal technology to do search and rescue. Right. Uh, for a long time, you know, FAA was striking people down all the time who were doing search and rescue, saying, you know, even if you remember the Equisearch case down in Texas, mm-hmm. and luckily that that entire case was struck down, Um, but the FAA has, uh, you know, said, well, if you're a public entity, you need a COA, but this is kind of before that was all known, and there have been many search and rescue missions and operations, but the caveat, what Swarm was teaching, I think Air Bears was saying the same thing, um, but they were saying that if the family asks for a drone operator separate from the police, that they can use it as long as it's authorized by whoever's in charge of, you know, the search and rescue mission or operation. Right. Um, And I know many times that even the Forest Service and, uh, what is it called, National Parks has dropped their rule uh, for drones, which, again, is a temporary rule. It was in 2014. Uh, In fact, I want to get the head of National Parks on the podcast and talk about, you know, when they've been on changing that. Yeah. Um, And I understand, you know, they had a reaction to the guy who dropped a drone in the springs up in Utah or whatever, but uh, I think... Drones are a great place for national parks. I think it's a great play, great way for national parks to make money too. You know, get a sure. permit for it, make it easy, fifty bucks, fly your drone. Right. Um, anyway, so if the family asks for a drone operator, it falls under those hobbyist kind of rules. But if uh, firefighters, local police, uh, any public organization, they have to have a COA or a certificate of authorization in order to fly. Um, And I pulled up the FAA rules here. Um, So as long as they have a COA, they can have you fly for their needs, right? Exactly. And that's one of the beautiful things about a public entity getting a COA, too, um, is that um, one of the caveats, and you may have a FISDO operator tell you differently, and you may have to point out the law to them. uh, And if you need that help, you can just give us a ring. Um, But... As a public operation, you do not need a pilot's license to fly under that COA. So it's one of the really cool things about the COA. Um, and, and by the way, that's something, if you didn't listen to an earlier podcast, that we've confirmed with John, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I was actually surprised to hear about that. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, the FAA says a certificate of waiver or authorization is available to government entities that want to fly a UAS in civil airspace. Common uses include law enforcement, firefighting, border patrol, disaster relief, search and rescue, military training, or other government operation missions. Applicants must submit their COA request through an online system. The FAA then evaluates the proposed operation to see if it can be conducted safely. If granted, the COA lets an operator use a defined block of airspace airspace and includes special provisions unique to the proposed operation. For instance, a COA may require flying only under vision. This is what makes no sense. Um, a COA may require flying under visual flight rules, VFR, and or daylight hours. Okay, and why does that make no sense? The uh, VFR is uh, something you fly in a Cessna, but I, I can kind of see where it makes sense because the, I think they're talking about mis- minimum visibility, which is three miles. Right. Um, you know, they want to make sure that you're not flying in storms. Um, you know, that you've got, it's just not crazy winds. And I'm just trying to remember because it's been such a long time since I went through that. Sure. Uh, but anyway, today the average time to issue a COA for non-emergency operations is less than 60 days. But I will say this, there have been emergencies. Um, and I know some FISDO guys have even been involved with this where they're like, you know what? Someone's life is in danger. Just go do it. Mm-hmm. We got to do it safe though. Don't do this, 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 or this. Which is always the case. I mean, you've always got to be safe. Yeah, you always have to be safe, but I've also heard the opposite of that. I've heard some FISDO people say, no, you can't fly, that's commercial operations. If someone's life is at stake, I don't care what FISDO says, as long as you're you're safe, 
Uh, you're not flying over people. You're not flying in the way of manned aircraft. You're not flying right next to an airport to try to find someone. Uh, you know, it's common sense because I think, you know, there are a lot of FISDO guys that it's an interpretive jo- job, right? It's just like police. You know, there, there's a level of subjectivity and in interpretation. Um, and some people... I'm sorry, some of you old crotchety guys, but some of you need to retire. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh. Uh, but some of you are really awesome people. I mean, I've met some r- incredible, incredible FISDO people, I, and it comes down to common sense. You know, like I said, does. I've heard both scenarios. Right. I think it's going to be really important how you approach it and say, look, someone's missing. Uh, I've got an authorization from the police to go out here. There's not going to be any helicopters flying over here. At the same time, we want to do a search and rescue mission. You know, can there's we do somebody it? up there who needs us, who need we need to find, et cetera. And I've got to think, Paul, that the majority of these guys, if you run into one of them and somehow they end up on the scene or whatever, they're going to be reasonable. I mean, you're going to have an exception to that or a few exceptions. Well, yeah, but I think they're mostly going to be reasonable. I agree 100%. I would, expect that. I would agree 100%. Um, l- I just wanted to put those cases out there sure. because there have been, you know, both sides of the scale, essentially. Of course, yeah. Uh, and we always want the scale to lean towards the common sense side, and sometimes that's difficult with government. But, you know, we, we can only try to uh, persuade people on a human level. You yeah, know? absolutely. Like, imagine if your daughter was lost hiking in the mountains right now. I'm doing you know? whatever I got to do. Exactly. Period. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, and if, if someone doesn't agree with that, I'd be shocked. Yeah, right. But, but so. anyway, and there ha- that has happened in, Albu- in Albuquerque now twice. Right. So, um, you know, it's it's kind of sad, but yeah. So drones can definitely save lives. That's for sure. So for Bob, he says he wants to start offering these services. That's the term that he used. So what he would need to do is get in touch with, and it sounds like he's a fireman himself. If I heard volunteer that question, firefighter. volunteer fireman, so he knows the right people as it relates to the fire department. Talk to them if they don't have a COA. That's something they need to get on and do first. Yeah, I would just go ahead and file for one right away. Uh, you know, they're saying it takes 60 days. It's an online system. I'm sure um, that you can, you know, go to fa.gov and file for one. Um, I'm sure John Rupert has helped. We've got some uh, clients right now or some people who are getting their COAs, mm-hmm. uh, and they want to learn how to fly, uh, which is great. But uh yeah, I think the co is the way to go. And again, you know, don't I wouldn't count on that situation of like, oh, well, if it's an emergency, we'll just fly. You know, take the steps now and and go out and get your COA and just make it easy right. because you know, the the sooner you make Fizdo happy, the sooner they get off your back. So Yeah, and I would imagine though it's probably a diminishing concern. There are probably still um, department leaders and so forth who are not, they've not gotten on the drone bandwagon yet, so to well, speak. Well, yeah, and Albuquerque is one of those. I actually just talked to the chief a couple of days ago, and he's like, drones are not viewed in a positive limelight around here right now. Hmm. So, um, you know, that it's is too bad. That It is too bad. Um, but, you know, I think that if cities filed for a COA, they, they created very common sense rules, and I just don't think that people are really educated enough as right. a society to understand the benefit. You know, yeah, a lot I mean, of people are just very afraid of being spied on, which is so dumb. Well, yeah, and we're, we're Here, hopefully educating and working in the right direction. This is the biggest thing you have to worry about spying on you. Just yeah. FYI, for anyone who's afraid of their privacy being lost, it's gone. It was gone a long time ago. <laughs> That's right. So. And that little webcam that you have on your computer. <laughs> it's been looking at you for quite some time. <laughs> exactly. One point I did want to bring up, and, and I, you know, somebody like Bob is going to know this, but there are people out there that might, I don't know, they might not think about this in the way that they should, but what we don't want is people going out in sort of a rogue fashion and doing things without checking with the people that are running a particular... Operation. Uh, operation. Yeah, for example, you know, wildfire, wildfires, the FAA is very serious about, you know, you may not fly near a wildfire. There are normally TFRs in the area. Other planes are flying in other helicopters. Right. But if you're working with the management on site and they need help via a drone operator that and they give you authorization, that's totally different than if you just see a wildfire, wildfire and you're like, oh, I'm just going to fly really quick and get some shots of that. That's not cool, as no. Obama would say. It's not cool <laughs> to not know what you're doing, not know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, and so again, coming back to Bob again, since he asked the question, I mean, I think somebody like this is going to do the work up front, develop the relationship, and then most likely 
when the need arises, they'll call him yeah. and say, come out, we need your help. Yeah. And that's the exactly. ideal situation. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, that's what we want to do, but right. kind of hard when your local government is like, ah, I don't know. Well, so, we'll get there. We yeah. got to be patient. Yeah, we do. We'll, well get there. just like with all things, right? Absolutely. So, but you know, uh, I don't see a lot of uh, I don't see a lot of public entities going out and hiring the kid down the block with a drone because I just don't see it working. You know what I mean? You you got to run special flight paths to make sure you cover specific areas so you can actually map out those areas. There mm-hmm. are certain times of the day when it's best to fly. So um, th- you know, th- there's just a lot that really goes into it, and you can't just have some random guy right. go out there and, and shooting. S- footage so absolutely not anyway i hope that answers your question uh if you have a if you have a question bob or another question or maybe those of you who are listening have a question go to ask yeah I, I am still waking up i'm still tired <laughs> so uh good morning um anyway if you have a question go to ask upload that question we've got some swag to give away uh also also, we've got some really fun stuff coming up and coming out. So if you're not a DroneU member, now is definitely the time to be one, just because when everything else comes out, it's going to be a changed community. Thank you to all the new members that popped in this weekend. We greatly appreciate it, and we, yep. love, we love the environment of learning. We love the positivity in the group. It's second to none. So very happy and very thankful to have you. And for everyone listening out there, if we can help you out at all, just let us know. Facebook.com slash drone you. Instagram.com slash the drone you. We would just love to hear from you. Yep. Anyway, that's going to do it from for us today, guys. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.